Hello everyone and welcome to Take and Make Crafts from the Rockville Center Public Library. This time we're going to be doing a craft based on a really great book we're going to read called Elmer. And we're going to make an Elmer is a patchwork elephant and we're going to make our own. Your kit and your nice brown paper bag will have a template of an elephant and all kind of beautiful colored tissue paper. So be careful when you dump it out because they are very light and they go flying. And on mine, I just put glue all over and I stuck all my patchworks on top. And then there'll be a googly eye in there too. So be careful you don't lose your googly eye. And that will be your Elmer patchwork elephant. And now we're gonna read. Elmer, the patchwork elephant by David McKee. You see how colorful he is, and that's what yours will look like, too. There once was a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. They were all different, but all were happy, and almost all were the same color. And you can see that. Different shades of gray. All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color. He was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. It was Elmer who kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually Elmer. But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until all the berries fell on the ground. Then Elmer lay down and rolled over and over on the berries, this way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there wasn't a sign of any yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white. Elmer looked like any other elephant. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed by the other animals. Good morning, elephant, they said. <gasps> he fooled them. When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants noticed him. There he is, sneaking in. They don't even know. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk and at the top of his voice shouted, Boo! <gasps> Oh, the other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with laughter. Then the others began to laugh, too. <gasps> too bad Elmer isn't here to share the fun, they said, laughing harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. Oh, Elmer gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You've played some good jokes. But this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate this day every year, said another, the day of Elmer's best joke. All of us elephants will decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third, and Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. And one day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white and have a parade. 
If you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day Parade who is an ordinary elephant color, you will know it must be Elmer himself. Look how beautiful they all are. The end. And that was Elmer the Patchwork Elephant. Just what we're, you're going to make like I did. Oh, that's a good book. Here's another. This one's called Mrs. Beebe's Elephant by Reza Dobland. Look at these beautiful end papers. Mrs. Beebe had a very big pet elephant. Every day they went out for a walk together. That is a big pet elephant. In the morning, they played with the children in the street. And in the afternoon, they had tea and cake. At night, Mrs. Beebe told her elephant stories so that he would have nice dreams. But the townspeople didn't like Mrs. Beebe's elephant. They thought he was too big and too loud and caused too many traffic jams. They didn't understand why anyone would want a pet. They just caused trouble. The townspeople believed that homes should be filled with beautiful objects like chandeliers and jewelry. They said that instead of talking to an elephant, Mrs. Beebe should read the newspaper, check the stock market, and keep up to date with economics. That sounds pretty boring. But Mrs. Beebe didn't own any fancy objects, nor was she interested in checking the stock market or reading about economics. She was at her happiest with her elephant, speaking about the past and laughing. Oh, see how she loves him, and he's even blushing a little bit. The townspeople protested for the elephant to leave. They were afraid that their children might also want pets one day. They do look like an angry mob. The town judge ordered that the elephant be taken to the zoo the very next morning. Aww. Mrs. Beebe was very sad that night. She hugged her elephant and told him stories until he fell asleep. She had to do something to stop them from taking her elephant away. The next day when the townspeople came to Mrs. Beebe's house to take her elephant, there was no one there. They looked all over the town, but it was no use. Mrs. Beebe and her gigantic elephant were nowhere to be found. Do you see them walking away? And they're too busy looking through her things to notice. After Mrs. Beebe and her elephant left, the town wasn't the same. The children stopped playing in the street, people stopped smiling, and everyone felt as if something was missing. A great sense of longing filled the elephant's place in the children's hearts. The townspeople didn't know what to do. They realized how much happier the place was when Mrs. Beebe and her elephant were around. So they decided to make a change. Do you see the elephant colored cloud right there? That shaped cloud, I mean, elephant shaped cloud. That's so pretty. The children would get their own pets and bring life back into their town. Some of the children picked dogs and others picked cats. Some even found their own elephants. Everyone learned that home is more than just a place for fancy objects and economics. It's a place for living a place for those who might even have room for huge elephants in their hearts because Mrs. Beebe and her elephant weren't gone. Not really. Oh, the end. Oh, that's a good one. What a beautiful book. And our last book is called The Goose Egg by Liz Wong. That looks so silly. Oh, look at these nice end papers. Oh, what a good elephant watering his flower. Oh, The Goose Egg by Liz Wong. Henrietta loved quiet. She savored the stillness of the morning as she sipped her Darjeeling. That's a nice type of tea. She loved the soft rustle of the newspaper as she turned its pages. And more than anything, she loved the lake. The lake could be noisy on the surface with the geese. 
But once Henrietta slipped below the surface, there was only the faint murmur of the water. She'd lost herself in her thoughts. Sometimes she got a little too lost. Henrietta's thoughts scattered and she went home to collect herself. She gently, sorry, she got to, oh, she bunked her head. Oh, that's what happened. She bunked her head and something fell on her head, but she didn't know it. Her thoughts scattered and she went home to collect herself. She gently felt her sore head. <gasps> what a lump, that's a real goose egg. So she bandaged, bandaged her head and kept quiet, waiting for the bump to heal. Oh, and she band-aided it on there until crack. She felt the top of her head. She felt something soft, something fuzzy, something like a baby goose. Mama, said the goose. Oh my, that was a real goose egg, not just a lump on my head. Henrietta ran back to the lake, found a nest, and carefully placed the baby goose inside. Henrietta waited and waited. Mama, I'm sure your mother will be back soon, baby goose. But no mother bird appeared. Henrietta couldn't just leave poor goose alone. She scooped her up and took her home. From then on, Henrietta's quiet was shattered. Mornings were splashy instead of still. The newspaper didn't rustle, it ripped. Something needed to change. And as Goose got bigger, she only got noisier. Honk, honk, honk. And there are the big geese flying away. Honk, honk. Henrietta realized she had to teach Goose to behave like a proper goose. So Henrietta hatched a plan. What is she doing? Oh my goodness. She showed Goose how to look for food. Oh, her whole top of her body looks like a, a goose. That is so cool. She showed her how to look for food, how to follow along, and how to flap her wings. The ears are just like the wings of a goose. Wow. How to hang on tight. Hold on tight. Here we go. And how to let go. You're flying. When Goose was grown, it really was time for her to go. Bye, Goose. You'll do great out there. Henrietta's house was quiet again, but she found that she didn't love the quiet quite so much anymore. When she dove into the dark and lost herself in her thoughts, she just felt lost. And at night she dreamed she heard Goose honking. And one day the honking was real. Baby Goose, you're a mama goose now. Honk, 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 and there's her babies. Honk, honk, honk. Henrietta loved those noisy goslings. And then the quiet was even better than before. Oh, they're so snuggly. The end. That is the end of our stories. And thanks for joining me for Take and Make Crafts at the Rockwell Center Library. See you soon. Bye.